Hello, my name is Paul Arwater, Infectious Diseases Site Advisor for Medscape and Clinical Director of Infectious Diseases at Johns Hopkins. Today I thought I'd uh, say a few words about Helicobacter pylori. This is a pathogen uh, known to many of you as a rather interesting organism that has been obviously now clearly linked with peptic ulcer disease and has uh, really revolutionized that particular concept. It's th also quite a foe. Our uh, strategy as infectious disease physicians are to fight infections and this particular bacteria has also been linked with malt lymphoma, gastric adenocarcinoma, and other conditions. Although quite honestly its associations with dyspepsia or gastroesophageal reflux disease are uh, probably not clearly evident or weak at best. Uh, the reason this came up was a particular ID consultation that was sent my way from a gastroenterology colleague. A very pleasant uh, man in his early 70s had been endoscoped uh, for reflux and biopsies of his stomach were taken which revealed Helicobacter pylori. He had taken uh, at least three courses of antimicrobial and uh, proton pump inhibitor therapy and has failed to eradicate uh, the organism. And of course, uh, the ability to understand this has been aided recently by the use of the Helicobacter stool antigen assay and the Helicobacter breath test. Not meaning we have to proceed with biopsy for surveillance. So this got me to thinking a bit in this man who otherwise was quite asymptomatic, how strongly should I push to have him uh, treated successfully and eradicate this Helicobacter pylori? Over the past few years, Marty Blazer and his colleagues who have been studying Helicobacter pylori have done a number of interesting epidemiological studies and has found, uh, at least with Helicobacter serology as a surrogate, uh, that if people are Helicobacter seronegative, they are at increased risk for esophageal cancer. Uh, two more recent studies have suggested that uh, people that are, or children that are not H. pylori positive are at increased risks for obesity, and asthma. The thought here is that H. pylori is perhaps a symbiote uh, and in certain environments is important for certain homeostatic mechanisms at play in our body. Now this of course is tantalizing but still a few steps from any solid proof but it got me to think whether we should push hard to uh, eradicate the H. pylori in this gentleman especially since reflux is not clearly associated. Now there have been some studies and hopefully these references will be included uh, uh, next to this blog where uh, people that need to stay on proton pump inhibitor therapy for their reflux seem to be at increased risk for pangastritis or atrophic gastritis if uh, H. pylori is not eradicated. So the sense that I got, and I'm by no means an expert, but uh, the, uh, this area remains, uh, I think, quite uncertain, but to my view, uh, H. pylori can certainly perhaps be a good thing in some situations, perhaps, and much like a, uh, a, a part of the flora that might have co-evolved with human beings over years, uh, but at other times uh, quite disadvantageous, especially if it will abet a cancer development or so on. So uh, I elected to treat the man with a fluoroquinolone based regimen and uh, he was able to turn his um, uh, breath test negative and we'll follow him a bit more uh, and see if this is a durable result. Uh, I think what this means is there are a tremendous number of uh, papers and uh, uh, groups looking at the particular H. pylori questions. There's still lots to learn uh, about whether this is uh, always a foe or at times a friend and uh, certainly begs the question whether routine antibiotic use for non 
uh, significant conditions in childhood may be doing a disservice. Stay tuned and I'm um, uh, sure we'll learn more on this very interesting question. Uh, thanks very much.